In this video, I'm gonna share with you all of the things that we are using for our morning time in our homeschool. I shared on Instagram a picture of my morning time it's not a basket, but like what we're going to be using for morning time. And I asked you guys if you wanted to see a video. So I am making a video for you because 100% of people said that they wanted to see it. So that's pretty awesome. I'm excited to do this video for you guys today. If you're not following me on Instagram, make sure that you go ahead and do that now. I post there much more regularly than I do here on uh, YouTube. But and I also just kind of share like everything, like all the real stuff that's been going on and all of the kind of day-to-day -day things that we do. But let's get into all the things right here that I have in front of me that I'm using for our morning time right now. Now in the past we have done like a morning basket type of thing but this year and I think even part of last year I just kind of stopped doing it like I don't really know why it just kind of fell to the wayside and I decided just this week on Sunday that I wanted to kind of pick up a new morning time where we kind of start everything together and that way we begin our homeschool as a family. Because if you don't know, I have two older children who attend a cottage school two days a week. And since we started doing that, like we fell out of kind of being like a family unit in our homeschool because they would do their assignments for the school and kind of get those done. And then I would do things with the younger three boys and we just kind of didn't do things together anymore. And I really, really missed that. And so I decided that I wanted to do a morning time where we were all just maybe for like 20 minutes to a half hour starting the day together and then after that everyone can kind of go off and do whatever assignments they need to get done. So first of all I have this little um, basket I guess. It's plastic so it's not like a super fancy basket. I th I'm pretty sure I get this at Walmart. If I can I'll link to it down below so you guys can get one for yourself. I actually have four of these and I kind of stack them up on top of each other. And it has everything that we're using for our morning time and then I also have a pile of books as well that we are all using for our morning time. So I'm going to kind of go through how we structure that time together and then show you all the different things that I am using. First, we begin with just prayer as a family and we go through some prayers that all the kids know and then we pray for anybody that um, has any specific needs or people that we love and things like that. And then we will move into our big book of Catholic Bible stories. And this one's really great because it has these stories from the Bible, directly from the Bible, and then it also has like things to think about and questions and even like some interesting facts and things like that. So I really, really like this and each story is just one page. So it's nice and quick for the kids, but I think, you know, it will take us a while to read through this entire book, but each page is really, really good. After that, we will actually usually play a game. It is a matching game and it is in our little bin here and it is this Catholic Words Memory Match game. And so we just play this as a memory game. It's just something kind of fun to do that teaches them all the different words of things that you can find during the mass. And it's just kind of a little fun thing that we can all do together because my youngest son who's five, he can do this and my older kids can do it as well. It's just quick and fun. And from there we mo will move on to our journey to joy book. I did a video all about this. I will link to it up above so that you can check it out. But I decided what I wanted to do this year, which it took, what is it, December now? It took me several months to actually get my act together and do it. But I've been going through this page by page with the kids and having them all answer the question. So they're all kind of doing it together. So it's probably meant to be done just with one person, but I'm just using it with my whole family and it's working out really, really well. And then after that, we will do Mad Libs, which are the kids' favorite. Now these are great because they're fun and they're funny, but they also teach the kids the parts of speech. So it is a win-win as far as I am concerned, because even something as simple as a noun, the kids can just get confused and they forget what a verb is, the younger kids. And so this really, really helps to kind of like solidify those ideas and also make it really, really fun. And like I said, I can do this with my five-year-old and I could do it with him when he was three and four as well. And um, he loved it and all the kids love doing Mad Libs. And then we also incorporate this mighty big book of riddles, which a lot of them are not great. Honestly, they're kind of stupid, but there are some really, really good ones in here and the kids really like it. And so we've just been kind of casually going through this, especially on a day when I have some cranky kids. It's fun to pull out this riddle book and just kind of go through and find some silly ones and, you know, see if they can figure them out or not. So this is just something fun to add to the morning. And then this book I found recently in a trip to Ollie's and it is 101 Awesome Women Who Have Changed Our, Who Changed Our World. And this is really, really great. And once again, it's like one or two pages about each person. And it's just great. I think it's really great because so many history books don't talk as much about women. And I thought it was great for my boys to be hearing about all the amazing things that women have done too, because they're not, they're just not talked about as much. So I thought this was really great to read with them when they're all together. And it's fun to just read it with all of my kids as well, because it's great for my daughter to hear all of this stuff. 
And the basket here is still filled with a lot of other things. Now right there on the top, those are story cubes. I don't know if you guys have used story cubes before, but we have two sets in here. And then there's also a big one that the kids got, sorry, it's kind of noisy, that the kids got from Chick-fil-A. I'm pretty sure it was Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A was giving out big, huge story cubes. So what we do is we start each of our little stories with a story, the big story cube, and I will usually pick it out and start a story for them. And then each of the kids without looking puts their hand in and picks out a cube and then they can decide which side they want to use and then they create the next part of the story. And we will go through the entire story um, using just these cubes and it's just completely made up. It can be whatever they want. It can be silly, it can be serious. Um, they were doing one today and they wanted to have a cliffhanger at the end, but I told them I wanted them to be able to kind of like finish up the story because I think that's an important thing to be able to do, how to like tie everything together in the end. So I forced them at the end to tie the whole story together with what the last few little cubes and it's really great and it's fun because this is another one that everybody can do together and it's just fun but it also helps develop you know their writing skills and even just like using adjectives and adverbs and things like that in their stories they don't even really realize that they're doing it but they definitely are and these are great i will link to these down below in the description box because they're really affordable and they are a great addition to any homeschool or any family honestly because you could play these as a game as well and then I do have a bunch of other things in here, like I have these US President's cards that we used when we were doing Classical Conversations several years ago, and I think it only goes up to Obama, so, um, but that's fine. So we use these, just kind of go over the presidents with these, and then I also have these great states cards that are for landmarks, locations, and capitals. We're studying US history. All of my kids are actually, even my kids who are going to the Cutter School, they're all studying American history, so this is just kind of a great thing to kind of go through. Um, which is, I don't know, it's really cute. I asked my, my son, John, who's seven, I said, what's the capital of Alabama? And he said, A-L. And so he's learning things, but he got a little mixed up because that's the abbreviation and that he did actually know the capital. He just got confused, but it's just fun to kind of go over these things over and over again. Here's some just pretty little flashcards and just lots of different things. I showed you those Catholic cards, but there is actually a second box in here as well. So we'll eventually get to those and do them as a matching game. And then I also have some, whoops, some brain quest cards in here too. Oops, sorry, it's a little bit glary, but um, these are really great. These are fun for the younger kids. It says ages six to seven, but I will pick out questions specifically for my five-year-old that I know he can answer and then do this with the older boys as well. I don't, I don't do this when my daughter's home because it's way too easy for her. I actually do have brain quest, um, another set like this for, I think it's ages 11 through 12 for American history. Um, it's actually really hard. Like it's very, very specific. So I guess it's something where you could kind of like go through it several times and then kind of memorize it. But um, I don't know that you would know all the answers to that. But anyway, I really do like these brain quests. I will link to these as well in the description box. And then last, I just have another set here of sight words. And um, I didn't show you these yet. I have two sets of sight word cards. So, okay, these are just basic flash cards. We just use these and go over them. Um, and I will do kind of like a race game with them where I'll like hold up the card and whoever can identify it first, they get to keep the card. And if they say it at the same time, then I keep it and we keep doing it over and over again. We see how many kids or how many cards each kid has in the end. And then I also have this set here that I printed off online. And I don't remember where I got it from and it doesn't say on here anymore, but, um, it was probably, was it? No, it was on a blog. I can't remember now. If I can figure it out, I'll tell you in the description box, but I'm not quite sure where I got it. Anyway, it has 30 sets of the sight words and you can turn it into a game. There's lots of different types of games that we have done, but it does come with directions for a specific game. One of the things that we will do is what I said with the other thing where I will just kind of show the card or put it down on the table. Um, and if I put it down on the table, I'll have them slap it and whoever slaps it and says it correctly first, they get to keep it. And if they do it at the same time, then I take the card back and we kind of do it until they get as many cards as they possibly can. So as you can see here, our morning basket time is not very like calm and laid back. It's pretty interactive. It's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of games. It's a lot of just playing together because that's what my boys, my three young boys enjoy. They are really super active kids. And I loved back in the day, a couple years ago and previous years, you know, I'd have a basket full of books and I would read through all of these books. And frankly, it just doesn't work with my younger boys. They get bored too quickly. And even when I give them things to do at the table, they just get antsy after a while. And so I have found that what works better for us is to do kind of these learning games to begin our day. And it kind of puts them in a really good mood to start our homeschool day. And then from there, we'll just dive into like all of our reading and our writing and our grammar and our history and our science and our art. 
And then in the afternoon, or if I want to take a break in the middle of the morning or something, I will take them and go up to their bedroom with them and let them play with Legos or play with something else in their room. And that's when I will do our read alouds. And that's just works, what works best for us. And I think the most important thing is to just kind of do whatever works best for your family. And so for us, this is the way that we do morning time now. And it's really, really fun. Nobody wants to stop. As soon as we play something, they want to keep playing it over and over again. So I've kind of had to set a hard and fast rule that we just play a game one time and we'll play it again the next day or else we would probably be playing games the entire morning. But it's really fun, great way to start the day. And I just wanted to share it with you so you could kind of see what we do. So if you guys do a morning time or a morning basket or a morning circle or something, let me know in the comments down below because it's really helpful to the other people who are watching this video to kind of see what other people are doing because we're all doing different things and it's great to kind of get any tips and tricks from other homeschool parents. So please go ahead and share those in the comments. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do that now and like this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Make any kind of noise you want because. <laughs> I'm <gonna cut> it <laughs>